Have you eaten a picnic on a sunny day? Did you notice that some things feel hotter or colder than others? For example, a metal fork feels hotter than a plastic fork. This difference arises because substances heat up and cool down at different rates. A substance's specific heat capacity determines the rate at which it heats up or cools down. When you visit the beach in summer, you'll notice that the water feels cooler than the sand. This difference arises because water heats up and cools down much more slowly than sand. The specific heat capacity of water also explains why hot coffee stays warm in a cup for a while. The liquid retains the heat and gives it up only gradually to the surrounding air. A substance's specific heat capacity determines how much it changes temperature for a given amount of heat, or thermal energy. The amount of temperature change depends on its physical and chemical properties. Some substances heat up and cool down rapidly. Others heat up and cool down slowly, according to their specific heat capacity. For example, if you have used rubbing alcohol to clean your computer screen, you will notice that it feels cold, even though the liquid is at room temperature. If you get a drop of rubbing alcohol on your skin, it feels colder compared to a drop of water. This difference is because rubbing alcohol has a lower heat capacity than water, so less heat is needed to raise its temperature and thereby to evaporate the liquid. The faster evaporation removes heat from your skin faster, so it feels colder. To determine a substance's specific heat capacity, we have to use experimental data. We begin with the formula to calculate the heat required to raise the temperature of a substance by a given amount. Q equals mc delta T. This formula is not as complicated as it looks. Let's break it down. Q is the amount of thermal energy measured in joules. M is the mass of the substance in grams. C is the specific heat capacity of the substance. Delta T is the actual temperature change, the difference between the starting temperature and the final temperature. Specific heat capacity C in the equation is measured as the heat or joules needed to raise the temperature of a given mass of the substance by a given amount. That is, specific heat capacity is the amount of heat needed to change the temperature of one gram of a substance by one degree Celsius. For example, in an experiment, one gram of water changed temperature by 10 degrees Celsius. The scientists determined that amount of energy used was 41.8 joules. We can use this data to calculate the specific heat capacity of water. First, rearrange the equation to find C, so that C equals Q over M times delta T. Plugging the values from the experiment into this equation, we get 41.8 divided by 10 times 1, which equals 4.18. This value of specific heat capacity is the amount of heat energy needed to raise the temperature of one gram of water by one degree. Specific heat capacity is different from heat capacity. Heat capacity refers to an entire object. Heat capacity depends upon the mass of the object and the specific heat capacity of the substance or substances from which it is made. It is the amount of heat needed to raise the entire object's temperature by one degree Celsius. For example, the heat capacity of a pan of water depends on the amount of water in the pan and the kind of amount of metal from which it is made. The heat capacity of a pan made from copper is lower than a pan made from aluminum. Aluminum has a specific heat capacity of 0.91 joules per gram per degree Celsius, more than twice that of copper, 0.39 joules per gram per degree Celsius. That is, copper will heat faster with a given amount of heat. That is why saucepans often have copper bases. The copper heats up fast, so it's a more efficient material to use for heating food. For practical uses, the specific heat capacity is easier to work with than heat capacity. Scientists and engineers routinely use specific heat capacity in experiments and designs. Water has the highest specific heat capacity of any common substance, which is why it is widely used as a coolant, as in car radiators. Builders and solar designers use the specific heat of building materials to design energy-efficient buildings.